Divine True Spirit Interactions. In this spirit interaction titled, Stuart interviews Jesus about life since his return. Mary Channel Stuart, a behavioral scientist who has been studying Jesus since Jesus was eight years old, who begins a series of interviews with Jesus on the subject of Jesus and Mary's return to earth and what life is like for Jesus now in comparison to his spirit life experiences. This interaction was recorded on the 28th of August 2018 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Session 1, Part 2. Okay, well, there's still more that I'd like to talk to you about. Just one more question about this incarnation, mm -hmm. uh, and then we can move on to the awakening. And maybe we need to have a pit stop first uh, after that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Before we do that. That's the perfect time. That's what I had in mind. No worries. So, uh, um, so it's not well understood, and it certainly has not been well understood by myself, uh, until perhaps a little more recently, why there was this anomaly in your spirit body. Mm. And obviously you're describing an experience of consciousness or awareness of an experience, if, if I define consciousness as that, mm -hmm. uh, where you are aware of entering a state from a higher state, a lower state from a higher state, for want of a better description, mm. and a process occurring. Uh, it's not really even well understood here how that is possible or how it is actually physically occurring. Mm. We see the effects, but we don't really understand the mechanics mm. where I'm at mm. and from the people that I've spoken to. What is your perception of what occurred at that time from a literal physical perspective obviously you had an emotional experience of it but have you been able to resolve the physicality of what happened during that time um to a certain degree i, I don't feel i've fully resolved it um I, I still don't have complete memories of the union condition you know i have memories of the condition itself but not the environment i suppose is the best way of putting it um could i clarify mm -hmm. you mean you have memories of being in a certain condition mm -hmm. but not what the environment around you was like in that condition that's right mm -hmm. yeah and and this has been a problem uh with a lot of my memories they every memory begins firstly with having to go through quite traumatic emotions. Mm -hmm. And then once I've gone through the traumatic emotions properly and actually have dealt with them to a large degree, then what happens is I'm able to remember specific detail about things like environment, who I was with and all those kind of things. And so with regard to this particular experience, which is the experience of coming from the 36th sphere into a, a newly conceived, a, a, embryo which is just obviously developing it's just two cells at that point mm. um you know that have joined and and um you know coming from one location to the other and um, the way i can sort of best describe it is that now now that i've had a lot of a lot more of them, the emotions surrounding the the condition is that there are so many interstellar boundaries uh, from a physical perspective. It's like you, um, in the soul perspective, you're in the union condition in a state that, as I understand now, uh, from what I remember, is a, is a state that encompasses the other dimensions. Um, so in other words, the soul union condition, the soul dimension, if we could call it that, um, where a union can, an awareness of a union condition is possible that um, we had to separate from that um, to a degree um, because, because otherwise we would not have a separated existence here on earth where we were firstly unconscious because mm -hmm. it, cause it, if, you, if, if we came to earth in a conscious manner, we would not then need to demonstrate the process of recovery. Mm -hmm. so, so we had to create um, at a soul level, we had to create an unconscious, a way of unconsciously 
returning to Earth initially, and then a growing awareness that occurred on Earth in order to demonstrate the process of soil-based recovery. Uh, in other words, of you know what you'd classify as the process of you know what I'd classify as the real resurrection, if you like, you know mm -hmm. the, the the real process of complete uh, embracing of a complete soul uh, and demonstrating that on Earth. And to do that, we had to start off as everyone else does start off in an unconscious state. But what I've had and, uh, is all the way through is fe feelings associated with the discrepancy between those states of consciousness and uncon uh, consciousness of previous a previous existence um, merging into this one has always been a part of it. And to my mind, it's almost unavoidable because the soul itself has to control the body that I'm now in. Uh, or you, it'd be best to say one of the bodies that I'm now in. Mm -hmm. All of the bodies that we, Mary and I are now in, must be controlled by the soul. And so sooner or later, there's got to be some connection that flows between that soul and the bodies themselves, including the brain of those bodies. And here we're talking not just the body physically, obviously, we're talking also about the body spiritually. Because the, because the body physically and spiritually don't belong to the soul in its original state. So, so the best way I could liken it for the listeners is um, Mary and I in our, were in our first incarnation in the first century. We, we had exactly the same process as everybody else does at that time. And, and we, you know, grew up in exactly the same manner, slowly growing into ourselves is probably the best way of putting it. Whereas in this particular incarnation, it's not the same because it, it's, these two, there's these two bodies that have been created again by, you know, the commingling process of the sexual act between our parents. And, and those particular bodies were created, but they don't have a mind that existed before that time. Mm. And they don't have experiences that, 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 the, that intellectually can be remembered before that time. But the soul that has this grander experience has to somehow control them still and therefore there are going to be things that filter in. Now, it might sound that that makes your life easier, but trust me, uh, comparing the two places, I would say it makes your life extremely difficult. Mm. Um, the way God's designed the first incarnation process is much gentler mm. <laughs> than, than this process has been mostly because of the condition on earth. Mm. If our condition on earth, it was in a one minute condition with God, and we incarnated uh, into a family who was at one with God, obviously our experience would have been vastly different. But the fact that the condition on earth is a hellish condition and uh, we're coming from a, a condition very close to God into this hellish condition, the trauma of that far, you know, in terms of a psychological, uh, psychological and f emotional um, is, is very extreme. And, and so therefore makes it very, very difficult to then accept the experience. So hypothetically, you're saying that if you had have incarnated into a family or to people who were at one with God, or even in a six sphere condition, you would still have had to go through a process of unconsciousness to consciousness of self. Yes. But it would not be as painful. That's right. And yeah. why is that? Well, a lot of the pain that the 14 experience is the contrast between the, where we came from and where we are now. Mm. And, and that is, in fact, almost all of my emotion that I've had to address has been about that. I've had to address, I feel very little emotion in comparison with my current life experience and, you know, things that have happened, even, even violent things that have happened in this life experience, pale in, into insignificance emotionally compared with having to become aware of, a, of another life uh, or a, a lived life uh, for 2000 years prior. It's like, so, so from my perspective, um, it's very difficult to be, allow yourself even in the environment on earth to become aware of these particular things. But once you do allow yourself to become aware of these particular things, you then have extreme emotional uh, feelings to address because of the contrast between 
the union condition and the condition on earth. But uh, even in the, say, at one minute or six sphere condition, there would still be a vast contrast. Of There's course. 30 sphere contrast. So but less emotional. Why, I, I guess I'm, for the listener, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to draw out why less emotional uh, trauma. Well, you, you know, the closer a person or the better condition a person is in love, uh, obviously the less traumatic it is to discover new things about yourself. Mm -hmm. The more loving your environment is, the more gentle that environment is towards your discovery or your self-discovery process. The environment on earth is very harsh mm -hmm. and it, it does not support even the discovery of self for a first incarnation person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't uh, support the discovery of self. In fact, as your own experience has demonstrated, mm -hmm. it actually destroys the discovery of yourself to a large degree, which you're then undoing for many years, sometimes centuries. Mm -hmm. in the spirit world before you actually discover yourself. Now, because of this uh, high desire on earth to completely deny the discovery of self and the discovery of personality and the acceptance of your personality and nature as God created it to be, obviously for the 14, when they have a highly developed personality and nature and are now incarnating into that location, the contrast between those two conditions are extremely traumatic. and. And as a result of the extreme trauma, there is a very strong desire in all of the 14 to deny completely any experience that is not considered to be by the rest of the world normal. And, uh, and as a result of that, um, obviously that then generates a huge amount of emotional suppression, which then generates a huge amount of other traumas, uh, you know, physical and emotional traumas as a result of the suppression. So so it's uh, quite a difficult process. Yes, like that. And there's many follow-up questions I could probably <laughs> ask you about that yeah. because I did see in yourself, uh, perhaps we should have our break and perhaps we can, we can either leave those questions for another day and move on now to your awakening or we can... Uh, follow up with those questions, yeah, we, whatever you would prefer. Well, I'm happy to yeah. do either. So yeah. <laughs> why don't we follow up with those questions and then proceed further. Okay. <laughs> just like to clarify something that we've just been speaking about, which is about you were mentioning the pain of the contrast between the soul union state and the state that of the state of the earth, which the 14 who have returned incarnate into. Mm. Uh, and you mentioned that, so if we say that's a first sphere state, mm. uh, so there's a contrast of 35 to 36 spheres there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you mentioned if, so for example, um, parents were at one with God and 14 people returned, then they would incarnate in, wouldn't they, into a sixth sphere condition? So, well, actually, uh, theoretically, <laughs> so if we can talk about the theory about it a bit, theoretically, if your parents were in an one with God condition, then there would be nothing precluding the person who incarnates from the soul union condition to remembering everything, mm -hmm. including the 36 sphere condition because uh, you know there are no barriers emotionally to the, remem the memory of such a condition. So theoretically, if they were at an at-one-ment condition, then there would, the, the, the memories of the 14 would be intact at the point of conception and therefore fully flowing to the mind of the, I don't know what that would look like, mind you, but it would be fully flowing into the mind of the physical body and the spirit body that are being the newly created physical and spirit uh, physical and spiritual bodies. If, it was a, if, if the parents were in a six-sphere condition, it would be a bit different because in a six-sphere condition, generally, and this assumes that the six-sphere condition might be there because of the person not having a relationship with God, that would also be quite uh, hard to deal with as well because the people in the 36 sphere condition have a have a relationship with God and a well developed relationship with God in a union state, mm. and then to come to the earth 
and then have to experience the break of that relationship, which is the primary trauma mm -hmm. of any person who returns. And that would be have a major traumatic effect on the person. So, so there's a difference between the parents being in a six sphere condition state and the parents being in an eight sphere condition state. And this is a crucial difference for those people returning as opposed to people in their first incarnation, isn't it? Of course. It, those in the first incarnation, whether they are uh, incarnated into parents of a six sphere condition or an at one minute condition, they would incarnate in a six sphere condition. But because there's the well-developed desire and relationship for God in those returning, this, uh, the impediment against the relationship with God in the sixth sphere has a major impact, theoretically. Yes, but uh, there, are, there are other factors too, obviously, because, uh, you know, obviously a person who incarnates, um, who has a consciousness of themselves, is very, very different to a person who incarnates who has no consciousness of themselves. So a person in their first incarnation does not have any self-awareness self mm -hmm. or self, you could say self-consciousness, no, no ability to understand its own will. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, no matter whom it incarnates into, it doesn't feel that its will is being thwarted. It doesn't feel that its will is being damaged. Whereas a person who has a conscious awareness of the exercise of its will and desire, obviously that's going to be severely impact, impacted and um, incarnating to anybody in any condition underneath that union condition. So, so there are so many factors that determine what the theoretical outcome would be mm -hmm. for you know, uh, uh, incarnation into specific conditions. Um, so uh, uh, almost a infinite number, I would suggest. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose uh, my questioning here is leading to um, a personal question with yourself, which is, which is really how you conceptualise yourself, you as, as you are now in the physical and spiritual bodies you're inhabiting now. And I find this fascinating and it's not well understood, as I mentioned earlier, uh, well, it's not well understood by me either, <laughs> <laughs> so that's a problem. Mm. Obviously, you've spoken to me in different forms, mm. and you know that my understanding in those forms is very different to my understanding in this form. Mm. So, you, in speaking to my, you know, to spirit through speak, speaking to us through. The spirit bodies we manifest in the in the spirit form, which you've which you've been able to do, and um, obviously we have varying levels of potential awareness in, in those particular bodies because they well those particular bodies have full awareness of yes. what everything that has happened, whereas me in my current form, there's a whole heap of things I need to do in order to gain that awareness. So, so in fact, my concept of myself at this stage is that. I'm probably a very, very limited version of myself. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say very limited, I, I said in one previous assistance group that probably 5% of myself, but I, I, I don't even know if it's that much, to be honest, mm. um, because I, I'm aware of the huge amount of knowledge and information we have in the, the, you know, in the union condition. And I'm also aware how severely limited I currently am due to specific emotions still that exist within me, how severely limited I currently am in comparison to that condition. And, uh, and so f my concept of myself at the moment is that I'm a se severely limited version of myself. <laughs> <laughs> but do you conceptualise and uh, do you conceptualise yourself as separate from that entity in the 36th sphere? Or do how how do you, I can speak later about how I've spoken to you in other forms and how it was relayed to me then. Yes. But I <clears throat> would like to hear because this interview is about yourself, <laughs> yeah. uh, and it is you this it, version of myself <laughs> that I've been studying. Yes. Yeah. Um, so how what is your and and I understand your answer to this question may change over time. Uh, in C fact, certainly. I'd be Highly interested likely. to hear how it has changed already over time. 
Mm. Uh, but really the, the key question is how do you conceptualize yourself now that you have a knowledge of, uh, for want of a better description, uh, a more complete self or a, a, a more aware self, how do you conceptualize you in this current physical and spiritual form? Yeah, well, it's a very, this is a very difficult uh, thing to really talk about in the sense of properly explain. Mm. Um, because a, as you know, my awareness of what's truly going on has been greatly affected by my emotional condition at the time. Mm -hmm. And I am aware that because of the issues of worth that I still have quite severely uh, to, you know, severe issues of worth that I need to deal with, I'm aware that that has a huge impact upon my, my perception of what, of myself currently. And could, could I interject just quickly? Yep. The, you often refer to issues of worth and it's unusual for me because I feel it's issues of truth, <laughs> truth that you don't wish to accept about yourself. Well, yes. Uh, no, and that, that while is I true. understand why you call that worth, yeah. I, I just thought I would take this opportunity to, to point that out. Yeah, my, no, my I, I see it as an issue of truth, but it, it feels to be, I suppose, is best mm. uh, an issue of worth because it's like there are some truths that the 14 need to experience that their current um, intellectual conception is not capable of, of believing due to emotions regarding their perception of their own worth. Mm. So, so you're, you're right in the substantially every issue the 14 face is an issue of truth. Mm. Um, but these, uh, it, it might be more correct to say that there are issues of truth regarding yourself. Mm -hmm. And issues of truth, I, 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 have, I have found issues of tru truths externally uh, a little easier to, <laughs> to grasp uh, through this process than mm. issues of truth internally. And it, it's funny because I, I, I do notice that the majority of people who look on the outside in at what's happening at this big experiment sort of see um, like the average person on this planet does seem to have a fairly good opinion of themselves in comparison to myself mm. and also in comparison to all of the 14. Mm. All of the 14 have a very poor opinions of themselves and there is some major substantial reasons emotionally and psychologically for that occurring that need to be given up and and it is a process of becoming aware of the truth of it but because there's issues of whether you feel like you're worth it or not mm. that are involved in it i often refer to them as an issue of worth and mm. um, so so what what it feels like is that there is still this this i i often call myself as i am now this aj person <laughs> He, he doesn't believe a lot of things about himself um, and he doesn't believe a lot of things that are actually capable of happening are able to happen. He's like the average person on earth in that regard. Mm. He, he has a firmly sense, uh, intellectually developed sense of logic, mm -hmm. which he's holding on to for dear life <laughs> because he sees it as the destruction of himself, mm. right, psychologically. And, and so you've got these psychological things going on for the 14 where they're holding on to their perception of themselves as they currently are for a lot of reasons. Some of the reasons are fear-based associated with fitting in with the world. Other reasons are fear-based associated with accepting who you really are. And other reasons are the psychological disturbance that occurs every time you've got to consider that you're a different person than your mind has had the experience of. Mm -hmm. And so it feels in some ways like you're accepting a different person to yourself, um, which in itself is quite disturbing because it, because it instead, it, see in your first incarnation, there's a natural growth process that occurs between the mind and its experiences and its memories. So every single experience and every single memory that you have in your first incarnation is associated with the mind that exists in your spirit body 
and of course is contained within that mind as a part of its experience, as well as the soul, of course, because the soul in the end is where all experiences get recorded. But the mind itself, the intellect itself, can't fight against mm. the experiences of the soul because the intellect is aware that those experiences have occurred in your first incarnation. Mm. So in your own experience, for example, you know, you know that you had a problematic relationship with your dad, mm. for example, mm. because it is an actual thing you remember. It actually occurred. There were experiences that you've had that you can remember and grasp. And, and those memories, even when you've suppressed your emotion, those are memories are still present in your mind. And while you can, to some degree, attempt to suppress them, they will still be present forever until they're released. Um, and emotionally. The memories that do emerge even after they've been suppressed are congruous with the experience the, in the physical form. Exactly. And, and, con and, and the emotions associated with such memories are, are in harmony with your intellectual memory of mm. those events. Mm. For the 14, none of that is true. No, not a single bit of that is true. Mm. For the 14, it's almost like they remember, like you remember your current life, they remember their first century life. Mm. <laughs> so, so this life feels almost like a, um, uh, a dream in some ways uh, to, to all of the 14, that they're trying to engage as reality mm. and desperate, in fact, to engage as reality for specific emotional and psychological reasons. Mm. So, so it is a very, very different process and it's very difficult to describe the differences aside from saying that um, you, you end up having this belief about yourself that is not accurate at any level. <laughs> it's not accurate in the sense of your realistic, logical brain telling you what's accurate. And it's also not accurate as to what the soul knows is accurate. It's sort of a, a state, a quasi state in between <laughs> mm. that, that almost at times fluctuates between those two conditions. So when I am not thinking about myself, mm -hmm. I can recall things uh, in my soul, from my soul and, and remember events quite simply and easily. But many of those events and re recollections have emotional signatures that I've yet to have dealt with. And as a result of that, as soon as I start to deal with them, um, it's like, you know, then there's this fight going on, or sort of like an internal war, an internal battle between accepting what the soul is and dismissing what the intellect is screaming for, mm. <laughs> which is very, very difficult. But there you're describing really, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're describing a state where there's a soul-based awareness which is in harmony with the condition of the soul in the 36th sphere. Then there's... In areas where I've de that I've dealt with emotionally. In areas where you've released some false... Beliefs, beliefs emotionally yes. beliefs emotionally yeah then there's the state where you still have false beliefs emotionally yep uh which are completely the opposite to the truth that exists in the soul mm -hmm. and then there's the intellect and are those three experiences quite uh distinct from each other yeah they feel to be mm -hmm. um it feels to be um there's this sort of psychological phase to it all which so there's the emotional phase to it all and then there's this psychological phase and i know psychological phases are emotional but is this like this identity fighting for himself mm. um which is which is aj fighting for himself mm. <laughs> and and sometimes he's putting up a pretty strenuous mm. <laughs> pretty strenuous effort to fight for himself and and sometimes i become aware of that and i go well i need to you know stop doing that that's quite dangerous and, dam and damaging actually um but but it's hard not to do it because it, it does feel like a death of AJ in the process of accepting who I really am. Mm. So while uh, I've gone through some very strong emotions about accepting my identity, like as Jesus, mm. my identity as AJ is still uh, present. And, and, and unfortunately, still because of its emotional condition, still having an impact significantly on my life and my memories. Uh, and when you say phases, do you mean elements? 
psychological elements or psychological phases? Is it something you feel that you pass through uh, or is it something that is an element of your experience? No, I, th I feel with all of these things, they are things we will pass through. You mm -hmm. know, the key is to find the pathway through. And, so, sorry. And that, and that is the difficult uh, thing for all of the 14, finding the actual pathway through this uh, conundrum, I suppose you could call it, of firstly, as a child, remembering a whole heap of things that you now want to deny, and then as, a ch as an adult, uh, going through an emotional experience to open it back up to it all, mm -hmm. and then realising that what you're opening up to is a very minor subset of what you need to open up to. Mm. And, and so every new thing you open up to um, sort of opens a doorway into a whole new world, I suppose you could say it, of what you now are aware you haven't yet accepted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure you've answered the question, question. of how you <laughs> conceptualise yourself, yeah. but we're probably leading well, well, up no, to... I, I suppose what I'm saying is I sort of conceptualise myself at the moment as a, as a limited subset of my true self. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I am aware that um, it's almost like there's two psyches fighting for supremacy of course in the end the psyche of aj is going to lose because it, it's not real it's like I've, you know it took me a while to come to terms with that uh, emotionally come to terms with the fact that my self as aj is not actually even a real soul mm. there is only the soul of jesus connected to this spirit and physical existence of aj and and so that, that's been quite traumatic emotionally even to contemplate. And I still haven't really come to full terms with that, obviously, because mm. if I had of, I would already be, I would already remember my full state in my 36 fear condition. Mm. Does that make sense? It's sort it of, does. so I'm aware that I, that I have a lot of awarenesses to go and, mm. um, and how that occurs. Sometimes I'm still uncertain because I'm still uncertain about so emotionally, I know that if I continue to deal with my emotional condition and feel my emotions as I go, then that will also do specific things. But I'm not certain, and, and nobody can tell me, of course, about how to make the transition between fully being, uh, or from being a partial version of myself into fully being myself. Mm. And because it's not the same as your first try at it. <laughs> no. Um, it's completely different. Your first try at it is, is very much uh, linear in a lot of ways in the sense that, you know, your mind assists the process, if you like, of your soul growth once you come to emotionally accept the need to deal with your emotions and to have desire for God and those kind of things. Once you realise all of that is benefiting you like you now have, mm. and your mind and your soul sort of work in harmony with each other, drawing you into each new experience. Mm. Whereas for the 14, it's almost the complete opposite to that. The mind is constantly fighting every new experience, mm. uh, even, even after you've gained some level of awareness. It continues to fight it until you work through why it is you're fighting it and mm. what what emotionally what what are the emotional reasons why you're fighting it so much and i still feel you know i'm not certain how to move through this next phase to be honest um i i have inklings of awareness sometimes of how to do it and then it's like um you know the aj character gains supremacy mm. <laughs> if you like well, and mm. I posit that is it not necessary for the AJ character to somehow assimilate into the whole identity? Well, that, that's what I originally thought. Mm -hmm. um, that, and, and I have been, and, I, and you probably know that I thought that many years ago. That well, that was yes, and I feel process. we've sort of skipped ahead, haven't that's we, right. in the timeline? Yeah, yeah but, that's all right. Yeah. We, we, we can yeah. answer these questions yeah. and then get back to the yeah. timeline. but. You, you know, you, you do know from your own observance that I um, originally thought that, yes, it was just sort of like an assimilation process. Well, actually, originally what I thought was that AJ would assimilate Jesus is the way I thought it would mm. be. Um, 
And then I went through this stage of thinking, oh, no, actually, you know, maybe it's the other way around. You know what I mean? Like, mm. but now I'm coming uh, to terms with the fact that uh, that AJ as a as a person does not exist um, in reality, in God's reality, and he only exists in his own reality. Mm. And a lot of it is about giving up his own reality, which is which is quite like I still am not sure how to achieve that. In other words, I've sometimes likened it to an overcloaking, if you like. Mm. You, you know, you've observed many people becoming overcloaked by a spirit. Um, what needs to happen here is AJ needs to let himself be overcloaked by Jesus, if you like, or by the Jesus Mary, because it's not just Jesus, it's the mm. Jesus Mary soul, mm. the union soul. You know, it's not, and, and we don't really have a name for that mm. um, in our documentation here. We call it JSMM. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, there's no, because it's not been done before, I don't really yet know how to do it. And I haven't been open enough uh, from, to God showing me how to do it either. Mm. Mm. So then how would you conceptualize AJ? Because it, how, do, just for the sake of your listeners again, are you saying that the, you're saying that AJ doesn't exist but what about the life that AJ has led, for example? Well, the soul Jesus has shared in the experience of the life of AJ. Um, mm -hmm. And while Jesus has been completely aware of what's been going on, AJ in his mind, which is not a soul at all, AJ in his mind has not been aware mm -hmm. that there is any level of awareness. So Jesus has already assimilated the existence of AJ mm -hmm. in God's reality. Mm -hmm. uh, the main problem is that AJ hasn't mm -hmm. <laughs> done that. And mm. from what I can see, you know, at this stage and, and my, as you, as I, as you said, my awareness of all of these different things is changing as I deal with specific emotions. So mm. next week I might have a different opinion, but, <laughs> um, but it is a process where I now sort of see myself like I now sort of see myself as AJ, because I'm still really holding on to that identity as much as possible, um, is really something that's going to disappear. Mm. And, and in fact, once I do disappear, the majority of the people around me won't perhaps even feel they know me. Mm. Not that they really understood AJ very much at all anyway, mm. but um, the, the reality is, uh, you know, once, once the soul can have its full expression through the body, that's when you'll see the real person. At the moment, I've got a, what you would classify as a very attenuated expression. So the G Jesus soul, Jesus Mary soul, has an attenuated expression through me at this stage and through Mary too, more, even more attenuated through Mary than myself. And, and an, until we change that, you know, the, the AJ person has to change that. The, the Jesus person can't just go, I'm done with you and that's the end of it because um well i, I don't even know if that's true but <laughs> who knows you know I, i'm just guessing you know at this stage uh that these things are potentially not possible but it does feel to me that we're here to demonstrate specific things and one of the things we're here to demonstrate is the use of desire and will now if the jesus soul overcome the aj's condition without aj being involved then there would be an overcoming of a certain degree of will in that. And so I sort of see that AJ has to develop his will to obtain this new condition, even though the soul itself is Jesus' soul. And, and, it, it, and I know listening to it is all very confusing, <laughs> well, which I also find myself very confusing <laughs> at times. <laughs> that wasn't what I was going to say. Yeah. I was going to say, firstly, it sounds like a frightening experience for AJ. Yes, mm. which is the main reason why he's holding on. But, you know, he's going to have to come to terms with the fact um, that what he remembers as to his life is one 55, 60 year experience of a 2000 year existence. So in percentage of his life, it's like percentage, of, you know, minor percent of his life uh, is what he is currently aware of at this stage. And that's a scary proposition for a lot of reasons. Um, I also don't know what I'm gonna do or be like in that condition. 
I have a relative degree of safety in my current condition. It feels like to AJ, mm. he has a relative degree of safety where, you know, what if, what if he lets himself be who he really is? What's Jesus going to do with that? Mm. <laughs> you know, well, I don't the see that advanced, much trust. <laughs> yes, the complete soul doesn't uh, lack faith or doesn't. Uh, Yes, so I can understand what but you're saying. But psychologically, it's, uh, it's really quite... Um, I still don't even understand why I'm fighting it so much, to be honest. Mm -hmm. and, and I still don't I get that. Um, I, I have more and more memories. Every, you know, as you know, every day or every week, if I deal with some more emotions, I have some more memories and more real realizations of my condition. And, I get to get into a new condition and I have a better sense of health. So I still have all the benefits, <laughs> but I don't know really why it is that um, I'm fighting the whole process so much as I am. Yeah. And I, when I say I there, I mean AJ. <laughs> well, there's a number of comments that I had. I just need to pause and let Mary reassimilate them all. Um. Can I say why she's pausing? Um, I have, you know, obviously you've spoken to the other parts of, you know, the other manifestations is probably the best way of saying it, of ourselves. You know, you've spoken to both the Mary manifestation, if you like, and the Jesus manifestation of ourselves in spirit form. And so um, their understanding of our condition is probably much better than our own understanding of it here on earth mm -hmm. and and that in itself is quite frustrating because because on some ways on some levels i'd like to understand more but on other levels i'd like to know less <laughs> so yes. it's sort of like and this is where the lack of there is an attenuated condition between myself in this physical expression with the physical mind and the spirit body's mind all trying to do its own thing because it doesn't think or believe it's going to cope with what's going to come to it. Mm. 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 Okay, well, look, let's... <sighs> I think the difficulty is that it's, it's very hard for anyone to uh, really understand what it is you're going through mm. and while I appreciate you making an attempt to explain it I think that um, perhaps I could ask you many many questions about it but I'm not sure given as you say it's something that you are still grappling with yourself I'm not sure that it would add clarity to to the conversation or sure. to the, maybe to the one listener. way to deal with the subject is this um, when you've had it explained to you by the other manifestations of myself <laughs> and is there clarity for you understanding it um uh, i'll answer that in a few different ways so allow me to do that um the 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 first thing is that the uh, other manifestations of yourself d don't experience any distress or concern about what is occurring. Um, they feel that it's a great privilege, a great um, honour given to yourself, which is not AJ, <laughs> uh, to, to your soul to be able to have this experience that mm. you yourself are having. Mm. Um, they express to me a great deal of uh, on, on, honor, if that's the right word, about what it what it is they're able to to achieve through this experience, and they feel very calm and happy about it. Uh, obviously, I, I know through observing both of you that that's not the the case for yourselves. Mm. Um, so that's one element. Uh, the other element is that. while they don't experience or express any distress they also don't experience a sense of separation from you either that's right they feel quite 
connected to what's happening for you and why and how it's happening. Uh, but they, yes. So that's unusual, of course, for all of us who speak with you because um, those manifestations of yourself don't experience you as someone separate and yet they do express different emotions in that they feel quite calm and relaxed and when we interact with yourselves in this state there's a difference mm. um, and so it's even difficult for those manifestations really to explain it to us in a way that we we can conceptualize well mm. uh, but it is very clear that their concept is much more complete their concept of self is much more complete in that they don't experience or they don't have a feeling of separation from mm. you yeah and, I, I, and you I'm are. aware of that you know mm. yes so how are you aware of that well this is the thing is it it's quite funny really in a lot of ways isn't it because obviously there's communication between the soul and the bodies um and and sometimes it feels quite strange because I'm often often feeling a lot of truth from them truth from our soul if you could say I'm feeling a lot of truth from our soul while at the same time fighting it in terms of emotional awareness of it so so frequently I can feel yeah that I know they're fully conscious of our existence they're fully conscious so they don't have any misgivings about it you know, what's going on it, this is a purposeful choice it, it's a loving choice um, and all those things have come to me in terms of uh, what's been basically said to me from my soul, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I still sometimes don't believe it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as well, AJ, and it, it sounds as though also there's a distinction between having a sense that you have, that you are bigger than say uh, this, AJ character as you called it mm -hmm. uh, and having a connection to yourself in a far more developed state there's a difference between that awareness and a surrender to surrender completely to the experience of that state Correct. minute by minute yeah very very different mm -hmm. as you know like you with meeting your soulmate and other kinds of emotional experiences there's a whole heap of difference yeah uh, you know listening to the theory mm -hmm. <laughs> which which is truth like listening to the truth of it in terms of hearing it and actually embracing it emotionally mm -hmm. and and this is the struggle that all of the 14 have they're not they while they might have heard some a lot of the truth you know from an intellectual perspective from themselves mm -hmm. um, embracing it emotionally has been a huge and is a is a big challenge and, and I suppose, again, there's another distinction uh, there, isn't there? Because uh, for someone like myself, when I learn the truth about, say, soulmates, as opposed to meeting my soulmate, I'm learning that truth from a source external to myself, be that God or someone else. Yes. But really your, your experience is that you are sensing things really from within yourself, but you're not yet fully surrendered to the state of self-experience. Correct. And, uh, and also... And sometimes that makes it even more difficult because no one externally is able to tell you what's going on. And particularly when you're the first person doing it, mm. no one, you know, obviously it's easier for the others, the 14 in that I couldn't, if they choose to, uh, I can share with them what will go on for them so that mm. can aid the process significantly. But, but for myself, obviously, I don't have that luxury. The only person that can tell me is myself or God. Um, and if I'm blocked to both, <laughs> it's going to be a difficult process. Um, so just to go back a little uh, in the way that you were describing um, the relationship between you and AJ, if I can say it like that. <laughs> uh, and if I contrast that to my discussions with other man manifestations of yourself in the spirit sure. world. Sure. On hearing you discuss it here today, uh, it sounds very combative towards AJ. You're talking about AJ dying, AJ being um, overcloaked. Uh, yeah, these are my feelings as AJ, you know, as to what uh -huh. what it feels like for him, mm -hmm. uh, like for me, for me in this state. Mm 
mm-hmm. it feels like yeah i'm gonna have to die and you know like i'm being forced into death sort of thing and i'm being forced to be overcloaked by something and and i don't want to be i want to you know when i say i don't want to be it's really weird as well because i can see all the potential advantages of being mm-hmm. but the, it, it, for some reason it just feels very very wrong you know what i mean mm-hmm. like so so I, I, and I can't explain even why, because it, logically there's no reason why. But mm. and yeah, so the, it's 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 difficult in that regard. But I but I notice it's the same for all the fourteen. They all have the same, even to a larger degree than I do, um, same feelings. Uh, and so then perhaps it, the concept of yourself as AJ. I mean, when you're talking about having to die. Uh, do you reflect like uh, is is that um is aj then just a persona it's who is governed, die, really. governed by fear or what what is the aspect well, yeah, yeah, of obviously, self obviously. or is it the self concept that must die I, i'm trying to clarify well uh, yeah what what, what has to die AJ. is is well there's no such thing as a soul of aj mm. so soul of aj doesn't exist so at some point, AJ has got to become aware mm-hmm. that his soul doesn't exist and he's a part of this, you know, combined soul, Jesus and Mary, you know. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's first, you know, he, there's, he's got to, but he's going to, it seems to me that if he doesn't let it go, then, it, then he won't become aware. So he's got to go through some process yes. that lets it go. Yes. Now, that process is obviously going to be emotional yes. because every process is. Mm-hmm. You know that's God's way, so every process is emotional. So there are some emotions, obviously, that I'm holding on to, you know, in, as, in terms of my uh, life experience in this life mm-hmm. that, are, that are causing me to resist the memories that could flow to me, right? Yes. To resist, in other words, the truths that could flow to me, because for me, they're all memories mm-hmm. as well as truths, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. When you're in your first incarnation, you hear a truth first, then you have to develop some faith, then you have to put that faith into action, then you embrace the truth emotionally, you go through an emotional experience, and now that truth becomes your own. Yeah. Right. AJ really is having to do exactly that. And we, the reason why I understand the reason why we planned it this way was so that we would have to do exactly that, mm-hmm. because otherwise it would not benefit the rest of humanity who have to do exactly that mm. in order to progress. Mm-hmm. So, so what we needed to do is demonstrate clearly to the rest of humanity one of the reasons for coming, demonstrate clearly to the rest of humanity the process that must be worked through. For AJ, it feels just as traumatic as it does for you having to go through that process. Mm -hmm. For Jesus, he's already done it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not traumatic at all. He's observing the whole thing, going, oh yeah, we planned this, right? For AJ, he's going through it. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference between going through it and actually observing it and having already gone through it. And, And I can see clearly, and I've been obviously shown through our own soul, That's the reason why we chose to do it this way, Mm -hmm. because if we hadn't chosen to do it this way, there was no other way to demonstrate to the rest of humanity how to actually progress spiritually on Earth. There was no other way to do it. This was the only way available to us. Mm. Right. So it had to be embraced this way. So I understand all that, but that doesn't change AJ's feelings about it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And and it's it's interesting, isn't it, listening to you describe that. It's almost as if uh, when you engage God's way, so if we go now back to the timeline and Mm -hmm. think about the period where I call it your enlivening. The emotional (laughs) awareness all of a sudden happening, but not an awareness of my identity. Yes, really at that point you began to embrace God's way. Yes. You began, without really knowing what you were doing, you were, began to embrace God's way as AJ. Yes. And seemingly listening to you, when one of the 14 engages God's way as, as their limited viewpoint of themselves, yes. then they make some progress and they progress in, uh, I understand there's other memories and things involved, but it's sort of a similar 
way to someone in their first incarnation. Which almost, is, e almost exactly the same way, with the exception that the emotions are more intense because mm. it's a 36 sphere soul experiencing them. So it, it's, it's almost the same, but the emotions are far more intense when they're experienced. And so that's a demonstration, as you were mentioning, that was the desire of all of you who returned to, to demonstrate how that happens, yes. doing things God's way. Yes. But then there's this other element that obviously began to come into play at this point, which I call your awakening, um, where now there's another factor, which is a new awareness of the fact that one might not be the limited version of oneself that one conceptualizes and that you may in fact be in a returned individual. Yeah, which is completely against all of AJ's prior belief systems and emotional awarenesses and pretty much everything yes. uh, psychologically and emotionally uh, in AJ is against that concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then could we now start to talk about that time of your awakening and what happened for you then? Because obviously I'm speaking to you about these concepts today, which is sometime post your awakening uh, and uh, perhaps at the time when you first became conscious that you were Jesus, um, uh, your experience was somewhat different to what it is now, or your understanding. Yes, um, very, very different actually now. Like mm -hmm. I, I never at that time believed that, you know, we had other bodies, that we were expressing ourselves in the spirit state, although there were indications that that was true. Um, you know, frequently indications that was true. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't even bother thinking about them because mm -hmm. they were, it was already all too distressing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so um, yeah, so the initial thing was more just a feeling that, um, oh, I, I, I am Jesus. But when I say a feeling, you know, obviously you observed it emotionally. It's uh, two weeks of basically, uh, you know, grief, all day, every day for that period. Well, really preceding, in some regards, there was a grief period preceding that awakening there and was, then yes. following it also. That's right, yes. Um, and from my perspective, your the brightness in your spirit body became significantly uh, enhanced mm -hmm. at that point, yeah. at the, both the lead up to the new awareness and following yeah. in that grief period. And uh, you would probably be able to explain better than I how, why that happened. And um, because uh, like, I wasn't that aware of it happening, the lead up period, mm -hmm. until I, you know, obviously got hold of the pageant messages again. Um, obviously that was a huge uh, thing for me because um, what it was describing about the soulmate relationship is what I've been feeling all of my life. And also reading my own messages. Well, yeah, as you know, it was more like, predicting what my own messages were going to say which is a very like strange thing i'd never come across them before and then all of a sudden i'm you know saying oh this this one's going to talk about this and this one's going to talk about that and and all the same time drawing all of these uh sketches of what i remember mm -hmm. uh which i never believed in ever before mm -hmm. um, all all happening at the same time so obviously it was pretty traumatic um and I also knew that it wasn't had anything to do with spirits because I basically still have quite a st strong uh, blockage to having convert, uh, not conversation with, but allowing spirits to overcloak myself. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in fact, I completely still shut down in that regard. Mm -hmm. So, so as you know, it's sort of like this uh, very uh, this whole experience during that phase was very emotionally over far more emotionally overwhelming than any other experience i'd experienced up to that point mm -hmm. and and also far more distressing in a lot of ways but also far more enjoyable in a lot of ways because all of these answers were coming to me so rapidly um, that i was struggling to emotionally even keep up with it all you know just yes, like you've experienced there, recently mm, mm. there was a lot of joy wasn't there mm. in connecting to truth yes to god's truth oh, it was just uh, oh, an overwhelming relief would be the best way to describe it mm. uh, to connect to all of this truth that i've always felt within me but i've never observed anywhere on this planet 
And <laughs> so, uh, so if we yeah. can clarify that point, did you all, because uh, that could be a little bit confusing. You're saying you already knew things that you were remembering. So what's, what does that really mean? Well, uh, um, again, it's like, um, it's very hard to describe, but Inside of myself all my life, I've had these very strong feelings about what is right and what is wrong, as you know. And, um, and even what is right and what is wrong with regard to philosophy, religion, politics, science, and many other aspects of life. Um, very, very strong feelings about them without any proof, without any evidence, without any substance uh, in the sense of like actual physical substance that I could put my hands on. Um, I'm sorry, what do you mean by without any substance? Well, it was all stuff that was internal. It wasn't anything to do with anything going on externally that I felt this way. So yes, you didn't have an external education in right and wrong about those matters. You just had a strong no. sense of something being right or wrong. Like I've never had an external e education really in mathematics and not much in science even. I'm an electronic you know, technician, but and, and a computer programmer and stuff, but a lot of that has been taught, self-taught as well. And I did four years of uh, training in that regard, but there's all these areas of like, where I haven't had any, any <laughs> connection with at all, and yet all of a sudden um, I have all this knowledge about. And, yes. and when I say all of a sudden, yes. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's not like an instant like that it was it was i had to go through emotions and then i would have specific memories which would then i'll be able to then recollect that i've always thought this way <laughs> and, and it's sort of like with the soulmate issue for example and um, once i you know read it i'm going i've always <laughs> felt this way you know this is how i've never been able to verbalize it uh -huh. it's probably the best way of putting it uh -huh. so i've always felt that I've always sort of felt there was something about it inside of myself, but never able to talk about it with anybody because most people are not interested in such subjects and also never able to verbalise it. And are you talking there about what it sounds to me like is you had an experience where your intellect is newly engaged with a concept that your intellect hadn't consciously engaged before, but you had had feelings that your intellect hadn't analysed before. Or, or accepted. Or accepted. Mm. And so this, by having the intellectual interface with this external concept, it gave validation suddenly to something that you then had the awareness, this has always been living inside of me. Yeah. It, now I have a, a I've, intellectual understanding I've always of it. felt this way. This has just put a voice to it. Uh -huh. and, and what I now understand that process was, and you would have been able to observe it while it was happening, but um, what I now understand it is sort of like a download where my emotions became allowing mm -hmm. of this intellectual download from our soul. Well, um, you know, I would have said it the other way around, you? but your <laughs> intellect became allowing of the emotional download. <laughs> probably, yeah, that's probably the way it was. But, you know, <laughs> what happened for me, though, of course, was that there was all this new knowledge, which felt like old knowledge, mm. but, but had a, which felt like it was always there, but just I could never really touch it or, mm -hmm. or, or put a voice to it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, you know... I allowed it for as long as I could, as you know, um, or as long as AJ felt he could. Mm. Um, you know, obviously I'm still working and I'm still, I've got four companies that I'm running at that stage and, and everything else is going on in my life, uh, obviously, <laughs> why all this is happening. Mm. So, um, you know, it was a bit of a tricky time in terms of emotionally as to how yes. to manage all of those things. And within a short period of time, I realised I'd have to, close down my old life in order to deal with this new information. Mm. Mm. And so uh, you're talking there again, and the, I saw this um, opening up to truth, and that was strongly correlated with th the brightening of your spirit body. Mm. I didn't really understand it as, as I do now, mm -hmm. um, but I did see that the more you opened up to these concepts, the brighter you became. Mm. 
Uh, it was a really good time. At the same time, as a very emotionally emotional time, mm. because mm. It, it's sort of like saw so all this one very emotionally good time. So I, the best way I could liken it to is like imagine you'd been you you'd been uh, you you'd lost. Let's say you'd lost the love of your life, and you and you thought she's completely gone. Um, you know, in your case, obviously, it's a lie. Yes. But anyway, I just say it from my perspective. You know, they're gone. You're never going to see them again. You just feel desperate and lost. And you're never going to... You feel it was right when it was happening. Everything was great when it was like that. All your life was good like that. And now your life's completely different and it's never going to be the same again. Let's say you feel like that. Mm. And then you feel like that for 50 years. Mm. And then, or in my case, 50, you know, 40 years by this stage, and then all of a sudden, some recognition, oh, the person's still alive. You've just lost where they are and, mm -hmm. you know, all that. But this is you that you're talking about, you know. And it, like, it's, like a, it's like a joy with, a grief, with grief, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's mm -hmm. a, a sort of joy and grief. Mm -hmm. Grief about all that time and, and terrible life that you've experienced in comparison to what you had and all of that, all that grief, but also all this wonderful, oh, it's so wonderful that, you know, that it's not the way I thought it would be. You know, another way I can liken it to is imagine that, you you know, you're born, you grow up on earth, you, you've um, lived a life very poor and with, you know, nobody really caring about you, interested in you or anything. You live an alone life. And then somebody comes along when you're 40 and says, actually you you're like the king of this country mm. you just didn't realize it mm. and how difficult that would be to accept it like emotionally you know that you could after having that lived that life um and that's what it was like it was sort of like this very difficult but joyous but a lot of grief emotional time mm. 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 and you would have probably observed that kind of emotional, uh, you know, and, and on top of that, with a lot of dis psychological distress about it, even if it's possible, mm. of course, added to that, mm. you know, it's just like the pauper would wonder how it was possible he was a king, mm. that kind of feeling, or how the person who's been alone for 50 years, longing for the person they used to have, you know, could believe that um, that person was actually still alive and how, how did they lose them and all that kind of thing, you know? So you can see that the emotions involved in it are like, yeah, they've always been really overwhelming, of course. And, and what I see in the rest of the 14 is that there's a definite desire in most of them to not even go through that mm. because, it, because it is such an emotional uh, roller coaster in some ways, mm. um, you know, to actually go through that awakening process. Yeah. Mm. And, and, uh, and I feel quite strongly that none of the four others of the 14 yet have really done that, you know, gone full into that. And, and I know I've still got a lot more to do, but mm. uh, because there's this whole other phase of coming to conclusion that it is you, you know, mm. that it's sort of like, you know, it is, but and you sort of can't believe it and you've got to get, come to the stage of believing it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that that and I'm still going through that. Yes, I, from my observation, it's more the sense. So the sense that I feel from you when I meet you in the spirit life, that sense of uh, joyful acceptance of self mm. that is, it's not present with you. No, it's, it feels like a traumatic acceptance mm. of self at this yes. stage. <laughs> and it does. And I, and I feel for all the 14, it's the same. You know, I can see in them exactly the same, like strong feelings of trauma associated with accepting themselves. Mm. And I do believe a lot of it's got to do with the location. Um, Although, you, you know, you've spoken to John now, have you? you? The Apostle John, you've had a chance to talk with him about We've met. the process. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So you see there that even he's still struggling in that stage of this final transition, if you like. Of what I, I sort of see it like a transition, a final transition, 
that needs to happen and I'm still not certain you know and obviously I, me and he uh, often talk in our sleep state trying to work out you know what the, mm -hmm. what it is which mm -hmm. is possibly part of the problem that we're trying to work it out but <laughs> you know we're trying to come up with potential theories which is the way we've all I've always uh, discovered truth in the past mm -hmm. is to come up with a potential theory and then engage it emotionally to see whether the theory proves itself to be true mm. and uh, and you know I'm aware that God is trying to share with me how to do it mm -hmm. I'm also aware that you know our soul may not know how to do it and um, I'm also aware of that because you know we, we are learning how to do it. Mm. And so it's not like we can, from our own soul, find out how to do it either. Mm. It has to come from God. Yes, yeah. and that is something that speaking to you in the spirit form is quite uh, pronounced, this feeling that um, it's a privilege bestowed upon you by God, mm. that it's, and you, you the view you have of it as a, a, the next stage in your progression. And, and in that sense, um, you've always had a sense of just trusting God in the progression and not, not predicting or not really even knowing how the next step will go. That's right. Uh, and so and in the spirit the life, yeah. you're very relaxed about trusting God yeah yes and relaxed with in the this lack life of certainty. Oh, I just want to get over and done with really <laughs> although obviously that's not true because no. <laughs> AJ is fighting so <laughs> but yeah it is it is difficult because it's sort of like ultimately I can see that the process of a person becoming at one with God and um, and the process of us recovering that condition is, is obviously a very similar process, which is mm. the reason why we designed this whole process this way, because we wanted to demonstrate the whole process to the point of becoming one with God. Obviously, once we become at one with God, it's going to be very, very different because we'll immediately be able to assimilate the knowledge of, of the full experience. Um, or, or that's the theory. Um, I, I can't see how it would not. Uh, be possible to be honest I, I don't know if I'd view it as a theory at this stage mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a fact mm -hmm. and the main reason why I believe it to be is because you can't be in disharmony with truth to that degree about yourself while at the same time be at one with God mm. so so my the my theory yes it is a theory but I think it's pretty strong there's a lot of strong evidence for it uh, in the operation of God's laws. In the operation yes. of God's laws, yeah. Yes. That would tend to indicate that once one of the 14 become at one with God, that it, it will be very soon after that they also recognise the full extent of their union condition. Mm -hmm. mm. mm. It will take a little bit of time for the physical to assimilate it, mm. obviously, mm. because uh, there's got to be substantial changes to the physical, uh, physical brain uh, yes. to rewire itself and everything to allow for the the transmission of that new truth so what i've noticed for myself as i'm progressing is my brain i can often often feel myself rewiring if you like mm -hmm. um, as i deal with specific emotions and and therefore able to assimilate new thought and information from of truth from god you know and um, but i'm aware that of the, the process between the seventh and the 36th is a vast difference between those mm. two states. And I'm aware that that process, once we become at one with God, there may be a very strong, a very uh, emotional time um, for a period of time while the physical is catching up with what's going on at the spiritual level. Mm. 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 But they're just theories at this stage. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Well, we could, would you like to speak, uh, however briefly or extensively, about, um, about the time since your awakening until now, in terms of your progression and uh, um, the changes you have made in terms of uh, self-acceptance and uh, progress towards God in your current state? 
we could we could mm. leave that for another interview entirely. It's it's really quite strange. Yeah, and probably is it a whole interview in itself. But mm -hmm. um, I do find it quite strange sometimes because the time when I was less knowledgeable about what needed to happen, I actually felt a stronger connection mm -hmm. with our soul. So but the more knowledgeable I've become, the more it seems to trigger the fear that's in me. Mm. And and as you know, fear is the is the problem with truth. Mm. Uh, like with accepting truth, fear is the problem. It's always fear. Mm. Fear in the end is the main problem of humanity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so you can see, you know, through the transition from the first sphere to the seventh and then into celestial heavens, it's all mostly about dealing with fear. Mm -hmm. You know, even in the sixth sphere, you've got the fear about God. <laughs> yes. That is still having to be addressed. And the the feeling I have a lot about this process is is that obviously it's going to involve giving up fears. Mm. Fears are all false beliefs, so, and we know that. So, so it, uh, it's a lot about giving up false beliefs. But what most people on earth don't realize is that false beliefs can only be given up emotionally. Yeah. They are not, you can't do it intellectually. Everyone believes you can, but you can't. Mm -hmm. and, and so I am aware that I obviously retain false beliefs, particularly about myself and about God. They're the two primary sets of false beliefs I feel are still retained and and I'm going to need to choose to experience them in order to give them up mm -hmm. and and I'm going to have to experience them emotionally but once I've experienced them emotionally and and go through in, through the condition of you know into being at one with God that condition again I can see that from that moment on there's no impediment to accepting all the other information mm. that the 36 sphere Jesus Mary soul has and since there's no impediment the only physical impediment for that information to be relayed to the planet is going to be through the physical brain catching up in terms of a wiring state and the physical the spirit body's brain catching up in terms of a wiring state in order for that information to be absorbed and then and then retained mm. as a constant flow and so that's what i sort of expect will happen i don't know if that's going to happen obviously the whole thing's an experiment mm. but but i sort of feel like in the period of time between when you first asked about my awakening if you want to call it that when was i i think i was 39 or 40 from memory i can't remember i can sort of remember the year 2004 so i'm now so yeah 40 41 mm -hmm. around that age it was wasn't it and so so from that time um i've gone through these periods where i've accepted the emotions flowing from the soul, you know, the, the new information that triggers emotions in me. Because what happens is all the new information I get from our soul triggers, triggers my false beliefs in me emotionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I go through an emotional process to release all those false beliefs. And then I'm ready to accept some new information from our soul, which then triggers a whole new set of false beliefs beliefs inside of me, fears inside of me, that I then have to choose to go through. And, and some of them I'm reluctant to go through, and other ones I've been quite open to going through. And where I've been open, I've accepted it quite rapidly. The new information is absorbed quite rapidly, and I can live that way quite rapidly. Where I've been fighting it, it has a lot to do with the soulmate and God relationships that I've been fighting it, and my concept of self, mm -hmm. those three areas which seem to be the main problem for all of the 14. Yeah. Would you say your concept of self in relation to your soulmate and in relation to God? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And, and also just my general concept of self in terms of um, potential capacities, mm -hmm. things like that, I think. But there, there's those three areas that I've been very, they are the areas I've been the most resistive to. Uh, more concept of self and soulmate than God, perhaps even, but even then I can see that there must be some things going on with God too that I've yet to become aware of 
as AJ that are blocking, right? So earlier when you referenced the more you've come to understand what you need to do, the harder it's become or the more fear has presented itself. Are these the things you're referring to in terms of what you need to do? Yeah, it's like my deepest fears weren't, right at the beginning, my deepest fears weren't exposed. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, at the beginning, there were fears associated with what is the rest of the world going to think of all this process and how will they treat me and will they lock me away? And, you know, you know, a lot of it was worry or concern about my own survival and things like that. Mm -hmm. they, they were the original fears, I suppose you could call them. Um, they, I see now they were my easiest things to deal with. Yeah. But what happens is as you address the easier things to deal with, and, and I think almost everyone will find this in every part of their progression really, if you still retain false beliefs which are painful inside of your soul, mm -hmm. and the harder things to deal with is sort of what's left for you to deal with mm -hmm. and what I've gotten to. And so originally there was a lot of openness to everything coming and flowing at me and so forth. Not on those hard issues, obviously, but mm -hmm. on all these other issues. And you go through it and you deal with it and you process it and, you, you know, you go through it emotionally. And as you know, I've done a lot of crying, a lot mm -hmm. more crying than probably anybody, I think, in probably history has done. Mm -hmm. And I and I think that's probably not, a, you know, it's not a false estimate. Um, I like, haven't investigated, but I yeah, wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, in terms of true, sincere, actual processing yes. of, inform of, of emotion. And, and, and even with all of that, I realised that I probably haven't processed my main things. And, and, and I'm, in some ways, I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. But in other ways, I'm sort of like, and in other ways, I'm going, well, come on, get on with it type of thing, you know, that kind of feeling. Yeah. And then in other ways, I'm dreading it, like mm -hmm. in the sense of, wow, it's going to be, a, you know, how long that's going to last compared to my last, you know, considering some of my, you know, processing emotion has taken months mm -hmm. of time. How long is this going to take me considering it's my biggest issues, you know? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, I, you know, it's sort of like a love-hate relationship with it in some ways. <laughs> yeah. From AJ's perspective, you yeah. know. Um, but, but I can see where I need to go. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really important mm -hmm. because you, you can't go anywhere, you know, that you don't know where to go. So, so you know, at least, at least the basics are there and they're always going to be true. And, and all I've got to do is trust God more, pray more, and which is what I, you know, that I'm doing that a lot, you know, yes. just to, to maintain a focus on these are the issues that I face and I need to, I need to face them and I need to deal with them. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Brother, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. And what a privilege for me to be able to interview you about these topics. Uh, I know that you have these issues to do with your to do with the truth about yourself, yeah. which makes you have oftentimes a poor opinion of yourself or a poor opinion of yourself than just about anybody here. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the, I, probably before you say anything more about that, can I just say that I think there's good reasons for that too, because all of the fourteen have a memory. Mm. of their past condition mm. and the world today is geared towards comparison yeah. and so all of the 14 have this terrible thing that they do to themselves they compare themselves as they are now to the self they used to be mm. and then they feel pretty like punishing about how they got there mm -hmm. and and i feel you know while that's happening it needs to stop you know <laughs> and but i can also understand why it's happening you know the the world is really geared isn't it towards yes. this punishing view of that could that in the end causes conformity doesn't mm -hmm. it you know on mm -hmm. the planet and you know the 14 are definitely not going to conform if they fully embrace their true nature and mm -hmm. and that's going to make them stand out far more than any other person historically has stood out even more than i stood out in the first century yes so that you know the, there's obviously a lot of fear associated with that false beliefs associated with that that need to be given up mm. yeah yes yeah mm. yeah well i th as i was saying yeah. it's, a, it's a wonderful privilege for myself and and um 
this it's just so it even feels more of an honor for me to speak to you in this state than to speak to the manifestations of yourself in the spirit world so i thank you very much for the for that uh, opportunity why is, why is that Stuart? No. Uh, because i feel i'm engaging with um While you feel this is a struggle, uh, which I understand, mm. and you have many uh, troubles or tribulations, I suppose, here, this is an aspect of yourself that is demonstrating such courage and is demonstrating, it's really where I get to interface with, with the aspiration side of you. I, 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 it's difficult for me to describe. like. Mm. In you in the spirit life, uh, as I said, you you're very relaxed about the progress. But in a way, I f feel and 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 don't you in the spirit life you you relax with the progress and you don't feel separate from yourself as you are now. Mm. But I suppose for me, inter interacting with you here now, I'm engaged with the side of you that really feels like you have to exert desire and aspiration in order to progress. Um, I know that that desire and aspiration is present when I speak to you in the spirit form, but perhaps I just relate more because of my own hmm. progress where I'm dealing with injury and false belief and error which I'm overcoming, which is what I feel in you. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, you in the spirit life, there's less fear associated with that, those changes. Yeah, and I, and I am aware that once we become ourselves truly, in some ways, a lot of people will probably struggle even more to understand this in that regard, because, you know, this is why I, I keep saying to Mary, it's why it's so important at this, in this phase to record us warts and all, because because that's the thing where people will connect. That that's the area where people connect, mm. and and I, and I sort of feel like we know that in the you know in our soul state we knew the advantages of coming back. One of the advantages is like even interaction with you. You know, if if it was just in our spirit state, and we mm. weren't back here on earth, it's highly unlikely you and I would have met for years to come. Yes, and and, that's very and maybe true. even longer. You know, maybe and I, maybe I never. Um, Which is another reason why I feel that this is such such a special thing. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I do see the specialness of being here in that regard, because I, and the other thing is that it it is it is so much easier to help people when you have gone through it recently and you remember what it feels like to go mm -hmm. through it. It is easier to help people. And people on Earth are also a little addicted <laughs> to this whole concept that, to share in the painful experience type of thing. Mm -hmm. but, but that's not what we feel. But that is also a point of contact, though, mm -hmm. in terms of helping people. But uh, the advantage of being here um, for, from our perspective is great because you, you, you've got the ability and, 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 you know, there's a whole series of things we could talk about about you know, the the concept of rolling up the heavens, you know, like getting slowly, uh, but surely getting rid of all of the areas of pain in the spirit world and on earth, and from the first sphere in the hells all the way up to the sixth sphere, and just sort of like, a, I love that verse in Isaiah, you know, about rolling up the heavens mm -hmm. like a book scroll, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and just the merging of all of the people in those locations into places either in the sixth sphere where they're happy relative or in, in a relationship with God where they're at one with God, one of the two. And the whole purpose of that um, is, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for that to happen by being here as yeah. long as, you know, we, the 14 in our current state, embrace that uh, me the memory of that decision, mm. you know, I suppose you could say. Mm. And, and that's still, in some ways, what I'm attempting to do, embrace the memory of the decision mm -hmm. to come. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
And once that memory is fully embraced, then I feel we have a great, a great opportunity to, to watch the development and assist the development of the earth and all of the uh, lower spheres in the spirit world uh, to be rapidly shifted into that place where everyone's happy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. that's so wonderful. So I, I do have a soul-based appreciation of that at least. <laughs> um, in the sense that, uh, you know, AJ doesn't fight that as a, as a concept mm. uh, and probably in a lot of ways has, hasn't ever. Yeah. Um, and so um, in my, to my mind, that's where it's headed. And the beautiful thing I like about these kind of interactions that we have is we, we get to you know, see everything from the perspective of a person on earth and also a person who's recently lived on earth and the person who's now living in the spirit world and still going through the process of development. Because I'm very aware that once you hit the celestial heavens, as I think you're pretty soon going to find. And uh, I'm not sure how soon. But, yeah. <laughs> but once you hit the celestial heavens, the, the memory of your emotional uh, trauma mm. is gone, mm. completely gone. And it's like it never existed. Mm. And, and in some way, it, it's so good to live like that. Mm -hmm. But it also, it's so hard then to help people who, who are still going through trauma mm. uh, to help them see that where you are now is in a state where you don't even remember trauma anymore. And, and they can't even believe that you ever had it mm -hmm. <laughs> and therefore there's a point there's sort of almost like a disconnection almost in some ways and so this is also given us the opportunity to to help people connect to their trauma and show them how to get out of it mm -hmm. so i feel you know i feel as you know i feel very passionate about the reasons why we're here just not so passionate about fully accepting <laughs> myself at times. <laughs> well, I thank you for sharing so openly. Yeah, no, thanks. Mm. Thanks for asking me the questions. <laughs> I was just reflecting to Mary this morning that you're the first person uh, who's asked me a question who doesn't, who has asked me questions, Earth on Earth or in the spirit world, who really hasn't known me in my first century life. Mm. 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 And... Uh, because some, you know, most of the other people who, you know, have asked us questions have actually known us or been our guides through that entire experience. You know? yeah. Mm. yeah, well, as I mm. said, I feel very privileged mm. in such, a, I feel in a very privileged position and I, perhaps it's my turn to feel a little unworthy, but <laughs> uh, uh, not really. I just, I really embrace the, the fact that it's a gift. It's a gift yeah. that uh, I've been given this opportunity and I'm very grateful for yeah. it. So, God is the great gift giver. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So my turn next, isn't it? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, then... So I get to ask a bit more about your life. Okay. But please don't feel like I, 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 I want to intrude upon any privacies. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you just say what you, you're happy I, to say. I will. I will. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling a little more relaxed than in our last discussion and quite happy in, uh, in what what's been developing yeah. between Matthew and myself. So, yeah, it's lovely, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That when, particularly when you're both in a similar condition, it yes. sort of is a, like a, it's a, a unique experience developing when you're in a similar condition. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah. another, it's another gift, really. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we often see soulmates on Earth, you know, who are in vastly different conditions sometimes. And, you can see how difficult it can be at mm. times uh, when they are in different conditions. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's a very fortunate thing, <laughs> isn't it? That it is. you're both it's in the same state or similar state. Yeah. 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 Mm. And we have great plans and passions. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, mm. things we'd like to achieve, but mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, perhaps, um, so you, you've only just, could I just ask, you've only just met John, not very fairly recently. Yes, mm. yes. Just had one meeting. Yeah. Um, yep. He was interested in my in my 
interview today and he's yeah. been in attendance yeah. uh, listening yeah. and sends his love but yeah. yes he he's still going through many of those things as well and but he I'm has a slightly different perspective yeah um, of course the seventh sphere is a little lovelier than <laughs> yes yes <laughs> here on earth so it's a bit easier to yeah um maybe enjoyed a bit more although sometimes it's also a bit more difficult to connect to the trauma parts of it you know certainly so, mm. certainly mm. yeah yeah. yeah, so, um, you know, his experience is going to be interesting too, I believe, so, mm. you know, because it, as in the spirit world, you'll have the opportunity to observe once he makes that transition, um, to observe uh, what happens to spirit form going through that transition. Yes, yes. So I think that's going to be a pretty interesting thing too, mm. for, and particularly interesting for a lot of people who did live in the sixth sphere or who've, you know, done this intellectual development of their yes, life. Yes, mm. certainly, mm. certainly. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you for having, doing the interview with me. Thank you. And uh, and we'll see how I go about answering some of the same questions in a year or two's time. Yeah, I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of course, there's many more things I could have asked of and course, clarified, yeah. but I think... Uh, and we can do that in other discussions yes. as well. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Great. No, okay. no, thanks for your time, Stuart. Thank you. Mm. See you again. Yeah. Mm. How do you feel about that, darling? Mm. Mm. Sometimes it helps talking because it's um, nobody talks to me about any of these things. So you've got to, you, I've got to, I when I deal with these things, I've got to get time by myself and feel them feel through them just by myself but yeah. when you talk about them with a person who's observing or whatever it's sometimes a bit e easier to connect to it because it, you know there's not the there's not the disbelief mm. that exists here on the planet for the same things because yeah. they have observed the truth yeah yeah yeah, mm. yeah. yeah that's nice so i feel it sort of it. makes it easier for me to connect emotionally sometimes that's good uh, than having to just address it all by myself, stuff, I think. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm.